Okay, so last week we talked about self-care and mind over matter and meditation and some different methods to help with self-care. But this week we're talking about soy. And uh, there's a lot of misinformation about soy, a lot of controversy. People are very anti-soy or pro-soy. So uh, we want to get deep into this. And there's a lot of estrogen in soy, so it's related to cancer. Maybe not. Um, anyway, would you like to start off with the... Uh, a story about soy, Daniel. Sure. You know, the, one thing I really want to address on, on this episode is the breast cancer because it's actually the opposite from what I'm reading. A lot of studies showing now that soy can actually help prevent breast cancer because, in, for example, the women of Okinawa, they, they've, they've eaten soy for generations and they have much less breast cancer and they have less prostate cancer because soy protect, helps protect against breast cancer, prostate cancer, and some stomach cancers. I was looking at a study just this morning about it. Um, they found women who ate at least 10 milligrams of soy a day after a breast cancer diagnosis had 25% lower risk of recurrence. So even wow. women who have had or had breast cancer, soy can help recurrent. I mean, can help prevent recurrence. So I don't know how people got on the, it's, it can cause cancer when it's actually the opposite. So, yes. So I think that where the myth came from was there was um, someone who uh, studied breast cancer. They realized that estrogen dominance, high estrogen was related to these cancers. And then they saw that estrogen is in some of these foods. And so they started telling people they need to stop eating these foods. And so one study came out showing that high estrogen foods are related to breast cancer. And they told everyone they need to stop eating soy because soy is very high in estrogen. Well, several studies since then have come out showing that that is false. And yeah. why it is false is we all have estrogen receptors on our cells, but we are mammalian. We have animal cells. And so if we have estrogen rich foods that are from another mammal, like dairy, those estrogens are going to fit into our cells. Those mammalian cell receptors are going to accept that mammalian estrogen. It's uh, I want to say that one's alpha. I, I might have alpha and beta confused. Um, plant estrogens are different. So if the animal estrogens are alpha, plant estrogens are beta. And so it's kind of like if you've ever put in the wrong key in the keyhole, you stick your key into the keyhole, but you can't turn it. And you're like, why can't I turn it? It's the same thing when you eat plant estrogens. They will not go into our cells. They actually will clog that receptor. So then we can't get more estrogen in, which actually is protective. And so and that the estrogens that are in plants and herbs or plants. So our soy, some of the herbs, we'll talk about those in a minute. They actually protect um, people who are high in estrogen because it blocks those receptors. So then the estrogen can continue to go into the liver and processed and moved out of the body um, to protect. That's a really good breakdown, Jennifer. So. <laughs> I just, um, I like, I like soy. I love tofu. Oh, um, yeah. I didn't, I didn't at first, but now that I know how to cook it, um, I love soy milk. I buy soybeans and I sprout them myself and put them in soups and things, make my own soy milk and stuff like that. And so now I do because of the studies, but I, I was afraid of soy just like everybody else until I realized it. Um, Dr. Christy Funk, if um, anyone listening to this, if you are really concerned about breast cancer, Dr. Christy Funk um, was the doctor who um, performed surgery on Christina Applegate and um, Angelina Jolie, who both um, had double mastectomies because they realized that they have the breast cancer gene. Well, Dr. Christy Funk will tell you, you know, she was strongly against um, soy. Um, and then she started writing the book. She wrote this book, um, Breasts, the Owner's Manual. And in her research, she realized um, that soy is actually protective, that we need to be eating soy and we need to cut out dairy and animal products. And she was so flabbergasted by the research that not only did she completely change right away, she has triplet boys who she said that morning for breakfast, she their lunches were um, 
turkey cheese cheese sticks wrapped in turkey that she was very much <laughs> into the uh, low carb paleo that's what she yeah. had fed her boys and she said she immediately went downstairs threw everything away and they immediately went plant-based based on the studies that she learned and so now she's a very very large advocate of eating things like soy and herbs that help to protect us from estrogen dominance so she's a fabulous resource i love her she's vibrant personality. So anyone who's concerned about soy, um, please look into Dr. Christy Funk. Um, I'll put her name in the show notes. Um, but I love learning about that. But so let's talk a little bit about sources of soy. Um, do you look for specific things when you are buying things that are high in soy products? I make sure it's uh, non-GMO. I don't know how you feel about that, but yes. I, I, I want to make sure it's organic when I yes. get it because um, there's a lot of evidence GMOs can be harmful to us. So I make sure if I'm going to do tofu, it's organic. Um, I prefer tofu as far as a taste from a taste perspective. Mm -hmm. Tempeh, I know tempeh is a fermented soy product, but I don't particularly like the taste. Mm. But if I'm going to get tempeh, I, it's just, I make sure it's uh, either non-GMO or organic. Now, there's like two different things. Organic is supposed to be non-GMO, but there's also products that are non-organic and it says it's non-GMO. So I don't know if I trust those as much as the organic label. Me too. You know, because I don't know about the reg. I don't know how well it's regulated. So, right. I look for organic non-GMO. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. And then I do like edamame. Oh, Yes. Mm -hmm. edamame and then like i said i buy dr dried beans i actually get mine on amazon direct from a farmer they're organic oh. non-gmo soybeans wow. and uh, i don't know why we don't eat those I and mean, they taste really good um, i just soak and um i soak and sprout mine and then cook them but you just treat them just like any other dried bean they taste like a really good white bean um wow. they're really good and then uh, i like to make my own soy milk with them and uh they're, they're delicious um so I don't know why we don't eat them, but I, you can buy them straight from a farmer, um, even on Amazon. So you just cook them and you you sprout them, cook them, and then just blend them up for the milk or? Um, so soy milk does have to be cooked. Um, I actually use a soya bella. I don't know if yeah. you've ever heard of that. I've heard of um, that. It looks, it's, uh, it kind of looks like a coffee carafe but yeah. you you can make any kind of nut milk like you can make almond milk oat milk any of those things it's pretty inexpensive it's like a 100 bucks it was, it's just like an almond cow um, okay yeah, but yeah half the price and it heats to make soy milk um wow. so <laughs> sorry almond cow but you i just pour <laughs> in a quart of my distilled water with my sprouted beans in the little strainer and you attach it and you plug it in and then you hit milk and it takes about 15 minutes it heats up it cooks it grinds and then you pour it out it's strained and you have a quart of soy milk i mean how easy is that wow yeah That's all from awesome. yeah a cup of it's like they provide a little cup but off from your cup of beans beans are inexpensive and when you buy soy milk on the shelves if you read those ingredients there's all kinds of fillers and they want to keep it all homogenized and so sometimes they'll add gum um, fillers or tapioca and things like that, which can, is a, can put us on a whole different subject. But yeah. when you make it at home like this, I mean, mine is distilled water and soybeans. That's pure, pure. Yeah. Right. Right. Or if I make almond milk, I know today we're talking about soy, but I put in a cup of almonds. I always soak nuts first, but I put in a cup of almonds and a quarter distilled water. And then there's a, you press mill and uh, strain it. And there you go. You have almond milk or oat milk or, or whatever. Yeah, so yeah. easy. Yeah, I'm like you. I, I do drink some of the commercial milks, but I'm wary of them because they have a lot of synthetic vitamins. And I'm not so sure about calcium yeah. carbonate, but that's another subject. <laughs> yes, yes. Let's make that a note that we need to talk yeah. about vitamins on another one. Yes, vitamins and supplements. Let's definitely talk about that on another day. Okay, so let's talk about some herbs um, that contain estrogen. So a lot of times when people, when they get to a certain age, um, women, they start looking at different like, hormone replacement and things like that. But there are some, definitely some herbs that can help. Um, always consult your doctor, you know, medical disclaimer here, we are not doctors. We do not diagnose, treat, or prescribe. Um, but if you are having issues 
with hot flashes and things like that, um, then number one, you need to clean up your diet. Um, hot flashes are usually liver congestion. And so we need to look at that, but there are herbs that can help you. Um, specific herbs are like red clover, which is also a blood cleanser, which can not only help with your liver, it helps with your blood. It also contains some estrogens. These Remember, these are plant-based estrogens. So they are protective. They're not um, harmful. Um, black cohosh, um, evening primrose, um, well, I'm not. I'm not as familiar with evening primrose. We didn't talk about uh, that often in uh, the school of natural healing. I know you can get different um, oils for that. Uh, I would like to grow my own seeds and just use the seeds for different things. And then there's chase tree, which is also called vitex berry. Um, that is also a wonderful one that also is. Um, enhances progesterone. And so progesterone is the happy hormone. And so for someone who maybe you're um, entering uh, menopause or premenopausal and you're having some um, not only hormonal issues, but some maybe some depression or feeling down, um, chase tree or vitex berry um, can be very helpful um, for that. Um, do you have something you would like to add with about the herbs? Well, um, I remember when we were when we were at the uh, Utah when we were in Utah with the the first doctor that taught I can't think of his name. Um, but, I can't say his name. Spin yeah, his name is like like yes. very. <laughs> I can remember. I can remember. He's talking about his wife, and she went through menopause, and it was smooth, like it went great because she was taking the horm uh, fe uh, the female was it the hormonal changes formula and the female reproductive formula. From Dr. Yes. Christopher, mm -hmm. and it kept all her hormones balanced during her menopause. Mm -hmm. He said she didn't have any hot flashes or anything. So, yeah. Um, I mean, yeah. could you imagine? I mean, a lot of women think, oh, menopause, oh, God, it's going to suck. I'm going to have hot flashes and I'm going to have cramps or whatever. But yes, you can use natural remedies to make a, a much smoother transition through, through menopause with these herbs. Yes. Yeah, it's very true. Yeah. So um, let's talk a little bit about men who are afraid to eat soy. What are some of the myths that that men share about eating soy, being afraid to eat soy? Oh, there's a myth that will lower your testosterone. You'll grow female breasts. Um, you'll get weaker. I don't know. All these myths, they're, they're crazy because I'm a... I, I consider myself a bodybuilder, a healthy bodybuilder. And of course, I've done my research on soy. And there are studies showing that soy does the opposite. I mean, some studies show it can actually raise your testosterone. Soy, they compare soy to beef protein for muscle building. And soy was equal to beef protein for muscle building. Mm -hmm. And I've never met a guy that started eating soy and look like Pamela Anderson. So <laughs> <laughs> it just doesn't happen. I've been right. eating soy and look, my chest looks the same as it always has. Also, soy is showing protection against prostate cancer, which is a big thing that us guys have to worry about. It can actually help protect our prostate. So all these myths you're hearing about, they're not true. You should not be afraid of soy guys even if you're not plant-based you can do like some plant-based days like today i'm gonna have tofu from a protein source instead of i don't know a hamburger you know mm -hmm. so what about soy protein powders you know if you uh, are a weight well, that's, that's a processed food you know yes I, I don't i don't take it because when i was younger before i knew all this i would take things like that but we don't need that. If we just eat whole foods, you're going to get all you need to build muscle and stay strong because I haven't touched protein powder in years and I don't have any problem with my energy or my strength levels, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's easy to get, like, like we talked about in our other protein episode, it's easy to get enough protein without using the protein powders. Um, mm -hmm. But if you are not quite ready to accept that, um, we talked about soy, the forms that we do eat, but we didn't talk about like soy isolates. And so if yeah. you're buying um, soy protein, it usually is in an isolated form, meaning that they've extracted certain components from the soy and that can actually be hazardous. And yeah. so the soy in its whole form, like a edamame, a bean, 
and tofu is not whole, but it is like I could make tofu from my soybeans um, easily. I just need to add, I can't remember what I need to add to it, but I can put it in a mold and, and add it to ferment it to make tofu. Um, here at home, it's not processing a certain chemical from the soy. When we start um, taking chemicals from an herb, which we can talk about at another time too, or from a food, that is when it can become hazardous. That's why certain foods um, get banned and things like that. It's not because the food was harmful, it's that chemical in a high amount is harmful. So you have to be very careful if you're buying a something that has soy protein isolate in it, which is in a lot of processed foods. Yeah. And which is, we're against uh, processed foods anyway. We eat whole food, plant-based. But whenever you are buying any products, number one, read the ingredients. That's my number one rule in, in every conversation. Read the ingredients. Um, and look, you don't want anything that's an isolate. You want whole foods. So for me, like TVP, textured, is that right? Yeah, textured uh, vegetable protein. Textured vegetable protein. Um, sometimes it's from chickpeas, sometimes it's from soy, but it's the same thing. It's still um, highly processed. Um, so if you something you want to use, you know, occasionally, um, maybe, but not something on a regular basis, definitely not. Yeah, I, I highly agree with that because you just don't know. And they still don't know all the the detrimental effects these oscillates can have on the human body. You know, it could increase inflammation in the body. It could increase possibly your cancer risk and anything we can do right to lower our chance of cancer we should be doing mm -hmm. um it could even damage the liver you know we just don't know. yeah yeah because it's too much of a the, like these highly concentrated protein sources are hard on our elimination organs the liver the kidneys yeah, yeah creating acid mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. yeah right um so is there anything else you want to add to our subject on soy well, uh, what do you recommend as far as servings per week? Hmm. I don't know what I recommend. Um, first, um, soy is on one of the um, allergy lists. Yeah. And so you do want to make sure that you're not allergic to it. And a lot of times people, they think they're not allergic to it. Um, they think they're fine until they remove it. And so I recommend that anyone, for any of the top, eight allergens, which are include peanuts, peanuts, dairy, eggs, soy, um, make sure that you eliminate, eliminate them for a minimum of three days, um, four days, take them out of your diet completely, and then eat them to see if you have any reactions and, and test it for three days. So like, if you just want to test soy, take soy completely out of your diet for three or four days, and then eat soy, but eat it regularly. You know, maybe have some soy milk, maybe have some tofu, maybe have some edamame today, tomorrow, and the next day, because sometimes you can have a delayed response. And just make sure you don't have any uh, negative effects from eating the soy. If you're all clear, then I think uh, Dr. Barnard says three times a day, um, three servings a day of soy. Um, I don't know if I have that much in a day. But I, I think that that's what what they recommend. Yeah, I think it's for the, the Okinawans we were talking about earlier. They eat it every day too. So, yeah, yeah, maybe some edamame with your breakfast, some tofu later in the day. Yeah, but not processed. No, no. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I hope we cleared up some some myths because <laughs> these are really harmful myths. Because look. I think soy could be a healthy part of any kind of diet, whatever yes. you're eating. I think mm -hmm. that could be healthy for everybody. And, you know, so, <clears throat> and of course you could do your own research. We're, we're teachers. We're trying to show people different ways, but you, there's go look up the studies for yourself. They're out there, yes. you know? So, yes. you know, just go look for, decide for yourself. And um, that's what I always recommend. Yes, me too. All right. Well, thank you for joining us today. Um, let us know, um, comment, um, let us know what else you would like to hear. Um, if you learned something from today's episode and if you have something uh, challenging us against soy, we would like to hear that as well. Yeah. <laughs>